Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Swati, for this lovely introduction. And I'm glad that uh, I've got this opportunity to present this different subject. Uh, now, historical, all of you have seen this subject. And uh, let me first tell you binomial coefficients and historical development. Now, uh, we are going to see through many civilizations and in as Swati said, in different civilization, the perspective of uh, basically these coefficients change. So uh, let us proceed further. So now I will talk about this in a detail. Uh, basically, this entire webinar is about Meru Prastara or Pascal Triangle. And uh, in the Pascal Triangle or in a Meru Prastara, how that triangle was mean how what is that significance of that particular triangle to indians and to greeks to uh, persians and let us see that journey so all of you are familiar with this particular uh, diagram i think in last week only uh, we had vasanta panchami on that day we drew this is a saraswati yantra and we uh, we do puja of this. I am going to return to this slide because maybe after this seminar, you will find something interesting about this yantra. So let us go further. So in this particular session, I will be doing ancient Indian poetry, basically chandas. Then Indians called Meru Prastara which is a, today we call it Pascal Triangle internationally. Then in Indian context, what exactly that particular Meru Prastar is about? Then how it went to Persia and what they were doing about it? Similarly, Chinese people have done a lot of work on Meru Prastara. And everyone knows Fibonacci. And how he has used or how Fibonacci uh, series, we can find it in Meru Prastar. And finally, combinatorics, where everyone knows that Pascal and Fermat has developed entire probability theories. And Newton's binomial theorems and expansions, how we can find it in Meru Prastar. So when I talk about ancient Indian poetry, there are five Vedangas, which are written, Vedas are, all of us know that Vedas are written in the form of a poetry or they are called as a richa. And this Vedic richas are written in a certain type of a meter or in a certain type of a shlokas, which are having some type of a inbuilt rhythm in them. So, therefore, when we say that we want to learn Vedangas or when we want to learn Vedas, these are the different things which we find. What is the meaning of Shiksha? So, Shiksha is the how you should pronounce Sanskrit words because if the pronunciation is different, the meaning will change. Kalpa is the method or the ceremony of performing different yajnas. Vyakarana is a grammar. Nirukta means origin of a certain world. Chanda, today which we are going to talk about, is the how we create poetry in a certain code. And astronomy or Jyotish. So this is five Vedangas. So to, one should know these Six parts of Vedangas if you want to know Vedas. So this is like a basic qualification to understand Vedas. So now let us see the science of poetry or a Chanda. Now when I was uh, reading about Chanda or the Chandaha world, it has got many different meanings. Like in Marathi, when we say Chanda, it is also for Chanta means hobby also. 
Then Chandaha means in Sanskrit. This is also used for Avarana. Then it is also used for direction or the Disha. Then it is also used for Somaha in Veda, Mithvis Rasa, Somaras. It is also used for cattle. So all these are the different meanings. But Yada Akshara Parimadam Ta Chandaha, this is a definition. Akshara means, we know that, alphabets. Parimadam means measurement. So the, the one which measures alphabets, that is Chanda, which is the definition. So, Chandokshara Sankhya Vachya Uchyate, so the number of syllables are counted. So let us see that, so how Pingalacharya was the one who has written the Chanda Sutra and he has written it in around 200-300 BC. But there are many, many people who contributed in understanding and evolving those Chandas. And then let's see how, what is the relation to binomial coefficient to this. We are going to see very soon. So this is the timeline. Pingala was there as I said 200 BC. Virahanka, although you see the 700 BC between Pingala and Virahaka, Virahanka, Bharata Muni was there or Bharata Muni's Natya Shastra used extensive Extensive Chanda Shastra was explained in Natya Shastra, 100 BC. Then there is a Janashray, Janashray Chando Visini is the book written in 600 CE. Then Virahanka, Vritta Jati Sabuchaya. So Vritta is writing the way you write the poetry. Jati means different type of meters in the poetry. And collection of that, so Vritta Jati Sabuchaya is the work done by Virahanka. Then Mahavira written a Ganita Sara Sangraha, which is, you can see the name Ganita. So it is a mathematics of writing poetry. It is in 850 CE. Then Jaydeva Chanda, 900 CE. Jayakirti Chandanu Shasanam, 1000 CE. Then Hemachandra, we can say year 1150. So, Hemachandra written the book Chandanu Shasadam. Shasadam means method. So, methodology of working with Chandas, working with codes of poetry, lots of mathematics, lots of codes. So, this is a way briefly they have done the work on cryptic formula, binary numbers. Pascal Triangle or Meru Prastar by Pingra. Commentary was written by Virahanka. Halayudha properly defined Meru Prastar and all prosodic combinations or the poetry combinations and coding of poetry was done by Halayudha. Now, actually there are two types of Chandas. One is working with, as I told you the definition, one is working with poetry and another is working with music. So the first one which was working with poetry is called as a Kavya Chanda and the other one which works with the rhythm of a tabla or any instrument that is called as the Matra Chanda. So in Kavya Akshara Parimadam or in the Kavya Chanda, uh, in this uh, Akshara Chanda, 0 and 1 or the binary codes was used. And Pingalacharya actually discovered the binary language also. He has given that in a certain, if the certain number is given in a decimal system, how to convert that number in a binary system. But now his perspective was not maths. He was not knowing that the coding which we are doing today for computers but that coding was used to create meters for writing shlokas and Vedic ruchas. And therefore, when I say long syllable or a dirgha, it is a guru or a code one. Short syllable, rasva, code zero. So therefore, 
let us take these syllables and let us see what it is, how it is done. Now, suppose I take a small either rasva or dirgha. How many ways I can write? One way. If I take the two syllables, so either rasva or dirgha, so there are one plus one, two ways. If I want to create two syllables, I can write rasva rasva, zero, zero. Rasva Dirga 01 or long short, short long. This is short long, long short, long long. So this is short short 1, 2, 1. When I consider three syllable, I will have a three different syllables. From this, I can create short short short. So like this, 101, 110, 011. So two short, one short and two long. Two short and one long, all three long. So these are the different ways. Now, we are going to concentrate on this third line because it has got eight different combinations. And if you have the four syllable, you will find that there will be two raised to four. Now, same thing. So, you can see that the red digits are nothing but Meru Prasthar or Pascal Triangle developing here. And this is the Sutra Pare Purnam Pare Purnam Meru Prasthara Bhaveta. And therefore, this is the Pascal Triangle generated. You write 1 plus 1, 2 in the middle. You make a design of 1, 1 at the periphery. 2 plus 1, 3, 2 plus 1, 3, 1. Again, 3 plus 1, 4. So these are the coefficients we call it as today. Why we call it as binomial coefficients? We know that if I expand A plus B bracket square, if I call this as a 0th line, this is the first line and this is the second line, I will get the coefficient of A plus B bracket square, A square plus 2AB plus B square a cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube. So like this, I can any order binomial expansion. I can do it with the help of this coefficient, which is our today's understanding. But the perspective of this is in ancient time, it is for chandas, it is for meter, it is for poetry writing or creating different tals. So now, therefore, this is the Meru Prasthar. We should call it Meru Prasthar, Prasthar or international name is Pascal Triangle. So let's uh, proceed further. Now, what we are going to do is, as I told you, we are going to concentrate on this line. 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay. We are going to concentrate on this line because... We are going to create or see a particular question that, let us see that particular question. The codes are classified. So, according to that fourth line, 1331, which is having this specific codes, 000, 101. So, these are the different ganas. Now, what are the different ganas means? There are eight combinations. 3 plus 3, 6, 7 and 8. So if I take a yogurt, 0, 1, 1 combination is called as a yo. This 0, 1 and 1. This is called as yo. Then if you take 1, 1, 1, it is called as mo. Then you take 1, 1, 0, it is called as ta. So now this is the code which everyone remembers as Yama Ta Raja Bhana Salaga. So all codes are remembered with a single nomenclature of eight different ganas. Now what are the gun? Like suppose I write a poem 
I use the code 011 in that poem, then all, all lines of the poem should have the same code. If I selected that I will write the poem in the with gun M, then all syllables in the poem will have the coding 111 and 011 means what? Rasva Dirga Dirga or Lagu Guru Guru. If I select Ra, then it will be Ma is 111, Ta is 110. So all those three eight combinations are written. So let us see those combinations. So see this. So Ya is 011, Ma is triple one. So these are all different ganas are there. And when we are learning grammar, we can find out this Vrutta Chanda in grammar. And somebody ask us, like certain poem we recite, and we somebody ask us, what is the Vrutta of this poem? So that means there is a name given to that Vrutta, and which is having the Gana, either Ya Gana, Ta Gana, Ma Gana. Now, how it works in the coding? I will just tell you if the number is terminal is the word. Now that word is separated by there are vowels. E is a vowel. I is a vowel. A is a vowel. So the divisions of the word is done as per the vowel. So TE is one part. RMI is another part. R is another part. R, M, I and N, A, L. N, A and L. So now, when I say that TE, TO, the code is 110, which I write here. R, the code is 101. So this is a very rudimentary example of how the coding can be done in the poetry. This is a very rudimentary example. I am going to take an actual example. And let us see how this coding, which is the fourth line of a Pascal triangle or Meru Prastara, and these are the binomial coefficients, how they are become a part of the poetry. So everyone in, whoever is speaking Marathi in this group, there is one Marathi poem, Sada Sarvada Yoga Tuza Ghadava. Now this is the poem written in the Devanagari. If you take the, divide the line of the poem into parts of three, three letters and you code them like so is a letter which is short, da is long and so is also here long. Why? Because this rafar on the bow, so becomes a, a zodakshar or the, the akshar, the syllable which is a twin syllable. And therefore, this is also treated as a long. Va and da and yo. So like this, entire poetry is written in a one code. Now, why one should write the whole poetry in a particular code? So there is a, there is a particular uh, discipline for writing a poem. Because if you write a poem in a particular code, the natural rhythm in the poem will appear. And... This is the particular discipline one has to maintain so that you can chant that poem very easily or one can chant that shlok very easily. So that is the main uh, entire, uh, entire thinking of creating such meters, creating these coefficients, creating this code is to create certain discipline of writing poetry so that the poetry will have some inbuilt rhythm in it and we can chant it and the people can remember it because most of the Vedic knowledge, we have an oral tradition of uh, passing that knowledge to generations. So when a knowledge is stored in an oral tradition, pronunciation is very important and the Sanskrit is a language that if the pronunciation is wrong, the meaning will change. And that is why there is a very strict discipline of meter of poetry writing is applied. And that is why so many generations 
of doing this particular work of Chanda Shastra. Now let us take another. So this particular Vritta is called as a Bhujanga Prayata Rukta. Now another very common example is from the Ramraksha. Everyone knows this shloka. Rama Rameti Rameti Rame Rame Mano Rame Sahastra Nama Tatpulyam Rama Nama Varanami. Now what will happen that or why I am taking this shloka? Because many scriptures are written in this code, which is called as the Anushtuk Chanda. Now, what is special about Anushtuk Chanda? What is the main uh, code system or what is the discipline maintained here? Now, everywhere the pattern is of eight syllable. So, whole Vishnu Sahastra Nama is written in the lines of eight, eight syllables. And like that, there are thousands of shlokas. Bhagavad Gita is written in Anushtuk Chandaha. Again, made up of eight, every line is made up of eight syllable. So, the particular discipline is this. And somebody from the Sanskrit, Narendra Gole has translated it into Marathi. Six syllable is long or guru everywhere. Fifth syllable is short. So this is the every line you should find six level is dirgo and fifth everywhere short. But there is a coding between odd lines and even line. Samanta Satve Rasva means even order lines ends with seventh level short. So even lines has a seventh rasva and Odd lines end with long. So this is a particular very, very strict discipline. And we can see that it is happening in this. So I have this coded it and I have checked it. So short lagu, fifth one everywhere short, sixth one everywhere long and seventh order is lagu and even order seventh line is short. So this is the example So about how strict discipline of Akshara Parimanam or a Chanda is used. Then let us consider the another type of Chanda which is called as a Matra Chanda. Now what is the meaning of Matra Chanda? When particular person is playing instrument, actually this is related to time duration. So when I say dha, 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 din, so din is a short and dha is a long. So let us see two bits is dha, which is long, one bit, which is din. So instead of having the codes one and zero, which is there in the Akshar Chanda, here we have the code long is two and short is one, specifically for the measurement of time. And measurement of matra should be easier. Because all these matras are counted on the hands or in the fingers. And uh, these fingers actually uh, people who learn uh, these matra chanda, they are uh, expert in using their or counting matras with their fingers. So let us see that. So let us, the question is, again, I'm going to take the fourth line of Pascal triangle, 1331, yeah. or fourth line of Veru Prasthara. And uh, how many ways we can generate the combination of eight Papa bits Kutula. using... Papa Kutula. Using twos and short bits once, long twos and short bits. So this is the basic question. Now... Okay, let us consider. So given a cycle of n bits, so generalized question in mathematics, how many ways pn, it is possible to play this cycle by using short and long syllable. In how many ways we can write the number n using ones and twos. So in real life, you can take this question as using one rupee coin and 2 rupee coin, 
how many different combinations are possible. It is a very good practice of learning probability also and uh, learning different combinations you can actually do and create that activity in the classroom if we are doing it. So let us do it in the perspective of Matra Chanda. So now let us see this one. So if I have a one rupee, I can or it is a, is a one matra, which is a short one. I just have din. If I have to make a two, I will do din din or I will say dha. So that is how many ways? Two ways. Now, if I want to say three, I want to create, then din din din, that is three short. Dha plus din, that is one long and one short. Same two plus one, that dha and din. And so therefore there are three combinations. Now, you can easily say that with the help of this four, I can have one four short taken four times, din, 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 din. Din, din, dha, din, dha, din, and finally, same, dha, din, din, and dha, dha. So, there are five combinations. So, anyone can answer the next question because you can see that what particular series is generating here. You can see that the next number is obtained by addition of prior two consecutive numbers. So 21 is obtained by 8 plus 13. Like this, for the 8 one, you can see that 21 plus 13, 34. So this is nothing but all of us know Pipodaki series, but Virahanka work on this and uh, he has created this series and this is a generic principle if particular n numbers and fn equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. This is a general formula for obtaining nth term of a Fibonacci series. So when I say f8 equal to 34, we say that as many number of ways or as many bits we can create if n equal to 8. So the Fibonacci numbers are well understood in India, which we can see certainly 200 years before. And it, it is related to the question of bits. Now, so this is the theorem actually, which we have seen. Hindu mathematician works of Hemchandra, which is so we can see that the solution is there for this question of long and short bits. And we created this. And today we know this by Fibonacci series. We know that Fibonacci has used this series in his book called Liber Abbasi, where he mentioned about all decimal system and Hindu numerals. And we say that, see that this series is mostly popular because it is a series of nature. We can see many objects appearing in nature which follow Fibonacci series. Now, this is a particular video. I will just show you a small part of it. Uh, Prajapti, we cannot hear it. Yeah, yeah. Just one minute. Yeah.
I think there is a way, Prajapti, when you share it, there is a way, I think there is a small button which will let you share the voice also. So, yeah. So when you share screen and then I think you go to advanced share options. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, not there. I don't know. No, no. I will do it now. Yeah. Now you can hear it. Is it audible now? One, one, one. Yes. Two, yes. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So uh, this is the particular video where you can see that uh, the matras are counted on the fingers and they exactly follow the Fibonacci circle and we can trace the Fibonacci circle and the speed varies according to each type of a, a different tune or the rhythm, the sp speed varies. So if I write the Pascal triangle or the Meru Prastara this way, how I can get the Fibonacci series out of it is this is the simple way you take the diagonal addition and you write the Pascal triangle horizontally. 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1 below the other. It is also called as a suchi or a bay in the in a pyramid way. And the pyramid which is having, uh, so this is a type of a pyramid where whole one stamba is made up of one. So like this, if you take the addition of diagonals, you get the Pascal, uh, you get the Fibonacci series. So this is a way easily one can obtain the Fibonacci series in Meru Prastara. Now, let us talk about, so we see that in Indian context, we have Matra Chanda and also we have Akshara Chanda, which used extensively binomial coefficients to create different type of poetry meters. And that is well-known in our culture, we don't understand it, actually the mathematics behind it. So let us see what Chinese have done. So in China, you will find the Pascal triangle written in this form. Now there is a different symbolic numbers written here. Now it is called as Yong Hoi's triangle because lot of work was done in part regarding this particular triangle. Actually, they have used the triangle to find out the solutions of higher order polynomials. And that is a work, they have done a lot of work on it in China. And in Chinese civilization, one can find that uh, they have taken these coefficients, they have taken and they have found the roots of the higher order equations, method of finding the roots of the higher order equations using Meru Prastara. Now, what happened to Persia? In Persia, we can see that Al Karanji, Al Karaji, who was a mathematician, and his book was there in which there is a mention of a triangle. We everybody knows about Omar Khayyam because he was a poet, astronomer, as well as mathematician. And he wrote one book in the 11th century. As we can say that a lot of business or trade relations of India and Persia were there. 
mathematics was easily transferable there and the chanda shastra or the lot of work done on poetry and rhythm it was so extensive that nobody can miss that and especially poets can't miss it and therefore we can see that khayyam has done lot of work on it and he created a triangle and therefore in iran it is called as a khayyam triangle then when we talk about the western country this is the one where petrus apianus he has used these coefficients for business calculation actually in this today's webinar i am not able to put that content but uh, pascal triangle or meru prastara coefficients with the help of vedic mathematics technique we can find out actually the compound interest very easily but the thing is that particular method is not very easily understood and it requires a completely different session which i have taken last time in some workshop so therefore those coefficients can be applied to find out the compound interest or even the interest rates and interest of a particular after 3 years after 4 years or even after if we can create a series infinite series and we can find out the total interest uh, with the help of a coefficients of pascal triangle so which can be the it for which we have to spend another one hour to explain that and therefore tartaglia triangle in italy was used to work on so it is more towards now algebraic applications and we can see that nicolo pontana published six rows of triangle in 1556 and we can see that gerolamo cardano studied the triangle published rules for creating this triangle which are the rules which we know today and our great person plays pascal who has completely created his own theory of probability and uh, all binomial coefficients or the combinatorial coefficients is discovered in the pascal triangle and the triangle was named after pascal by pierre raymond and de mauvier so let us see this what is this theorem so as i mention you a and b we have the coefficients here 1 1 so it is a 1 and 1 then here the coefficients will be 1 2 1 which is the second line of meru prastara 1 3 3 1 3 line 1 4 6 4 1 which is the fourth line and as you can see the degree of a one variable goes on decreasing 3 2 1 0 and degree of the another variable goes on increasing b raised to 0 1 2 3 so using this logic and using this coefficient one can create any degree expansion so if i want to create a six degree expansion i will have the coefficients 1 6 15 then again 20 then again 15 6 and 1 and therefore i can create the whole a plus b bracket raised to 6 as a raised to 6 plus 6 a raised to 5 b plus 15 a raised to 4 b square Plus twenty a cube b cube plus fifteen a square b raised to four plus six a b raised to five and finally b raised to six. So like this, using Pascal triangle, ex binomial expansions become very easy. Now another thing is, 
finding out the geometric progression. And that has also done by, or this mention is also given by Pingla. And this is the addition of a, every row will give us the powers of two. So it is like a geometric progression with common ratio. So this is two, four, eight, 16 like that. And therefore this is, we can see that this is a property. Now Pascal has used this for combinatorics coefficients, like how many ways we can select zero objects out of two to see zero. How many ways we can select two objects out of four, so four C two, six ways. How many ways we can select three objects out of five. So like, so therefore, and with this, there is a six upon 16. So this is associated with probability. So here the total becomes 16 and 4C2 is 6. And therefore, there is a probability of 6 upon 16 of flipping exactly two heads when flipping a coin four times. So 4 denotes the number, number of times the coins are flipped. So this entire probability concept can be explained with the help of these combinatorics coefficients in the Pascal triangle. And very famous now, the binomial theorem, which is given by Newton, A plus B bracket raised to N. We know this, the binomial expansion. And these all combinatorics coefficients you use from Pascal triangle. Now, another application I have seen, this is the infinite series given by Newton. Now, the same type of infinite series was also given by Ganita Kaumudi in a Narayana or Madhava series. So, Madhava, Indian uh, uh, mathematician, he has also given such type of a series. Now, how to find this? coefficients in the Pascal triangle. So suppose this is 1. Now suppose I want to find first term of this pi by 2, this 1 by 3. So then I will take 2 and I take this 2 and I take this 3, 4, 3 as a multiplier. Then I take this 4 into 4, this and I take this 4, 6, 6, 4, then next line, 5, 8, 9. So there is some pattern here which can create entire pi by 2 series or a infinite series of pi. So therefore, if we see these are my, so this is the entire journey from Pingra and his work of Chanda, Chandas writing poetry, rhythm to in the western world when we come it is a completely mathematics as a discipline the pascal triangles were perceived as a only discipline of mathematics but it was used in earlier as a combination of poetry music and mathematics and there is a deep study actually and it is a very very abstract study i can say we have to do it in a very in-depth study we have to do because everything is in Sanskrit. In 200 BC to 1350 CE, there are around uh, 10 authors who has written about Chanda Shastra and uh, everyone gave the explanation, gave the different sutras, gave their own perspective and therefore everywhere we can see that this particular Meru Prastara, although we think that it's a very simple triangle, it is not as simple as we think. So thank you very much. These are my references. I thank James for sending me very, very valuable references for especially work on Matra Chanda and Vrutta Chanda. So 
uh, now I think I've stopped sharing the screen. And if anyone has any questions,